And we're back. Okay, this... Oh, actually, has it landed yet? No, it has not. This particular rocket has just come back from this location. And if you'll see here, we can't see any of the unique items that are available, and we haven't actually ticked off all of the, any of these study things. But the moment this rocket lands, and it dumps out its data banks, and any second now, there we go. Now once we get in here, they're all ticked off. See the little tick marks in there? They're pretty hard to see. Uh, let's find one that's not ticked off. Oh, sorry, now they're all green. They're all ticked off. And we can now see the, ooh, niobium and fullerene. Actually, this one over here also has niobium and fullerene, except it has 5% niobium. Uh, the fullerene itself, you'll only ever get trace amounts. Just no matter how far you go, you're only going to ever find trace amounts of fullerene. So, Annie, the, the closest uh, astral body with fullerene is the one you want to go to. Uh, and in this case, we actually have two choices. Because this one has fullerene, this one has fullerene, but this one also has a better quantity of niobium. Hmm. Yes, I think we'll be going to going here. This this uh, this looks very good. That rocky asteroid, we don't care about it so much. I've got, I'm going to scout it, but yeah, I don't care about it. Anyway, uh, a couple of things before I get started. Um, actually, yes, I've up, I've actually put a, a profile picture up. Uh, I was going to put one up ages ago, but uh, about the 1,000 subscriber mark, but I was just going to copy-paste something from the, the Oni forums, or, you know, one of the Oni pictures, but uh, I actually... Mary Lou in the comments uh, suggested a, an artist to me, so uh, I actually paid an artist to get a little picture done up. I hate doing maintenance, and if I had just thrown up a, a terrible picture, I would have had to replace it later. That, no, that doesn't agree with me. I'd rather just pay someone now and actually put something up and be happy that it's going to be there and be done. Uh, I'll put a link to uh, Draken, I believe it is. Yeah, Draken, she was the artist who did it up for me. I'll put a link to her in the About section of YouTube, YouTube so you can actually, if you're interested in getting your picture duped, no, duped is the wrong word. I remember I had a word for this. Actually, I can't remember. Anyway, if you want to get your uh, picture duped, you can uh, find her link there and you can go send her on a picture to get uh, duplified. Duplification. Ah, duplication. If you want to be duplifi duplicated, duplicated. That was the word. Anyway, uh, this is going to be this uh, particular episode. We're going to be going around getting cargo. So to do that, we're going to want to figure out how much fuel we want to send, how much cargo wagons we're going to put on, all that good stuff. Now, also you're going to want to know what planet you want to go to, and we already know. These ones here don't have anything we want. Isoresin is useful, but not useful to us yet. We're looking for niobium, and we're looking for uh, fullerene. This planet has both. Um, we only need a tiny amount of niobium, but we're going to need about three to four runs of fullerene. So if we can knock out the fullerene and the niobium on the same missions, uh, why not? And get some steel at the same time. We're going to need lots of steel to keep completing our our, uh, our bunkers, our ro launch silos. So lots of steel, fullerene, and niobium. This seems like an absolutely A-class planet to get our hands on. Now, uh, we are going to have to figure out how much resources we're going to have to send, though. So quick jump over to the browser for the rocket calculator. Now, as you can see here, I left it on the petroleum rockets with five research modules for the third ring of planets, and that's how much uh, petroleum and oxalate we've been sending up. But we want to send cargo wagons. Now, the goal here is not to... Hmm, I suppose the whole goal of these videos is not to teach you what to build, just how to work out the mechanics of, wh of what you need, and then you can, you can figure out what suits your playstyle. So in this instance, I'm just going to show you what I normally have settled upon for petroleum rockets, for, for all rockets in general. It's always two cargo wagons. And uh, I'll try and explain my reasoning behind it. Uh, if I send two cargo wagons, it will cost me 1,700 kilos of petroleum and 1,700 kilos of oxalite. If I say to send three, I'm pretty sure that won't even allow me to send three. You know, it's unreachable. But uh, just say we had a, a, yes, a liquid oxygen hydrogen rocket. That one will allow us to send three and we can send a thousand kilo use a thousand kilos of resources to do it however if we just send two it actually costs us a little under a little uh, a little over half so if we were to go from two to three the actual increase there is insane we're, we're spending twice as much fuel and we're only increasing our cargo capacity by 50 percent so it's costing us 50 percent more fuel but we're only increasing uh, that's the wrong. We're doubling our fuel. We're increasing our fuel cost by 100%, but we're only getting 50% more cargo. 
You know, I've played around with this and tested it, and the further you actually get away from your the closest planet ring, the worse this becomes, but there's never a point where it's actually more fuel efficient to do three cargo wagons. Two always surpasses it. And uh, by the same token, well, I'll just go back to regular oxalite, same planetary distance. Uh, if we put in one, you see there it's eight, 880. So if we double that, we'd get uh, 16, 1,700 and something. Basically, a, a little bit more than this. We could send one cargo wagon and it would be slightly less efficient than sending two. Now, all that said, there is the, the cost of you have to put a duplicate in there. But the duplicates don't actually breathe or eat or anything in there. So once they're in the machine, they don't actually count for anything. So they're not an expense. Now, I would encourage you to play around with this a bit yourself and see what you see how the different things shake out. But by and large, two cargo wagons, unless... Unless, let's say you have to get to the 40k ring. That's the only place you can find uh, niobium or fullerene. You, you you basically have to get out there. That is the only instance where I would recommend sending one because you, you literally have no other choice. With petroleum and oxalite, you can't get out to the 40k planets with two cargo wagons. They weigh too much. So you basically just have to send one. But if it is that bad, you can always head out to the 50,000 as well. So you're pretty safe that you're going to be able to get niobium or... Um, you're going to get no or fullerene unless the first six planetary rings don't have it but let's just get back to actually doing this okay so we need 1766 kilos of petroleum and same in oxalite that's what we're going to be running and we're going to be mul running multiple missions so i'll probably be running about four missions out to the planet all right so now we know how much we need now we just have to fill up the rockets with the correct amount and well reconfigure them for cargo duty so we are going to need, well, actually, we're going to need two fuel tanks. Uh, the way this works is fuel tanks can hold 900 kilos. All, all the different variants, uh, well, there's only two, I suppose. The liquid fuel tanks for petroleum and hydrogen both hold 900 kilos. The solid oxidizer tanks can go all the way up to 2,700. Now, nine into 27, you actually get three. So one solid oxidizer or one oxidizer tank, but the liquid and solid can support three fuel tanks. Now, you can play around with the rocket calculator as well. You'll discover that going above three fuel tanks is just never a good idea. Each fuel tank adds more weight, each, and the more weight you have, the more fuel you have to send with you, and eventually you just get to the point where the rocket can't leave the ground. When I originally started this, I thought, oh, if one oxidizer and three fuel tanks gets me X amount, I can put on another oxidizer and three more fuel tanks, and it will get me even further. No, it, it the rocket didn't leave the ground at all. Yeah, that was that was awkward. Anyway, um, we need to fit, we're going to fit, uh, what was it we said, 1,706. 1,706 kilos of oxalite is going to be stuck in there, and we're going to have to fill up the fuel tanks as well. Now, what you can do is, you we're not going to be able to be filling both these tanks up, so we could put half of 1,706 in each of them, but I'm usually very lazy, so normally I'll just fill up the first one with 900, and the second one I'll fill up with, uh, we we'll need about 806 kilos, and that will give us the total 1,760 kilos we need. Uh, one thing I do want to do, though, is uh, I want to actually delete this for a minute, deconstruct it. Uh, the reason being, I want to actually run a petroleum pipe all the way through here made out of ceramics. At some point, I'll be ripping out this uh, the petroleum and I'll be replacing it with hydrogen, and I'm going to be running a hydrogen loop. So this is just a little bit of foreplanning on my part. Uh, we're also going to need a second fuel tank, so we're going to deconstruct you. Uh, we're also going to need two cargo wagons. We'll deconstruct you. And we're also going to need to put on a command capsule about there. I think the rocket's going to be about this high. So we can actually, well, I want to test something here. Uh, someone was saying the, the astronauts don't get out anymore. Or do they? Ah, yeah. So once you deploy these, the astronauts will automatically deploy and they immediately want to use the bathroom. I understand. I understand. Okay, so off you go. Uh, in the meantime, we will deconstruct you. And... Oh, we should probably start constructing these. Oh no, first thing I wanted to do was get a ladder across here. I just want to construct that last piece of piping right there. Now, I also want to fill in the rest of this with ceramic. This just allows me to pump the petroleum in now. I could bring it in the other side, but later when I upgrade, this will just have been a convenient choice. Now, Okay, the saves are actually taking longer and longer. I've actually been removing them and editing a bit as well, just to cut them out. They're, they're up to uh, many severals of seconds. Now, uh, we need a... Oh, I just realized something. I can't put them on. I haven't actually got the research yet, have I? I need to get this. <laughs> Oopsie. 
Uh, yeah, I probably should have researched this first. Never mind. Okay. That was me not thinking. Uh, I should have enough research modules brought back to how many data banks we got there. Actually, how many data banks do we have in total? Data banks, 18.6. Oops. Okay, well, I'll have to wait till the other rocket comes back. Don't worry, I'll, I'll skip that forward and get rid of it. You, you don't need to see that, but we can at least start prepping this for the next stage. Uh, yes, I can't place that in. I can't place the... Uh, okay, so liquid tank goes there, cargo tank goes there, second cargo tank goes there, and then we're going to want to command capsule. Actually, no, wait. Second liquid tank, two cargo modules, then the command capsule. I'm doing that wrong somehow. No, two liquid tanks, two cargo modules, yeah. Uh, then we're going to want to command capture. And I can't place the cargo modules because I don't have them. We'll just uh, substitute in research modules until the time comes around. And that way I can at least stick in the um, stick in the command capsule. Now, uh, I'm also going to want to redo the wiring for this. This is all messy automation and there's a much cleaner way of doing it. Uh, if I stopped being so silly about it. Oh. That's another thing I never covered, was the mechanics of the rocket exhaust. That's actually a very interesting one. Well, it's very unexpected. Now, what I've done here is I've replaced these all with insulation to make it a little bit clearer. Uh, the rocket has an exhaust, but let's ignore the gas part of the exhaust for the moment. That's, uh, there's sort of two, there's a two parts to a rocket's exhaust. One is gas, and one is just straight heat. So below the rocket, in the central three squares, let's see, it's seven squares wide, so about these three squares here, Below the rocket, there will be a three by nine, right to there, there will be a three by nine exhaust, exactly this size. Of, well, I call it dry heat. Basically, it's just heat. There's no, it doesn't actually have a, a substance. There's no gas that gives off or nothing like that. It's just pure heat. If there is anything in the path of these nine tiles, a gas, a solid, or a liquid, it will heat up. Just, it's like a, think of it like a microwave beam. Whatever's in here is going to get heated. So as you can see from these three tiles of uh, insulated, insulated tiles I put here, these tiles are like 160, 180 degrees. And the insulated tiles to the side of it, yeah, they're fine. They haven't been actually heated up at all. The only heat they've accumulated is what they've got from touching these tiles. Now, originally I had all the tiles like this as just mafic rock, and they basically turned red because, well, they were soaking up the heat and the mafic rock was actually transferring the heat. It was just basic mafic rock, so its thermal conductivity is not amazing, but it's good enough that it will transfer heat once it gets into the hundreds of degrees. And if you'll notice here, that was touching this conductive wire bridge, which heated it up. Now, it's since cooled down since I hooked it up to, uh, well, since it's passed through insulated tiles now. But originally, this actually got up to 200 plus degrees. Yeah, the heat spread around a bit here. I don't know how it got into the plastic ladders. I don't know what happened there. But uh, thankfully, we remained below melting point. It's 143 degrees, which is about 7 degrees below melting point. So it worked out. But that is just something to be aware of. Anything in a 3 by 9 tile radius will get incinerated you can some people use the heat that comes off of this to run steam turbines uh, melt regolith and turn it into magma uh, various things like that there's lots of little tricks you can do with that hot exhaust now on top of that hot exhaust there's actually a gas it gives off it it's different depending on the rocket type for example but uh oh i didn't close that door uh what's going on here ah I deleted the command module, so this defaulted back to meteor showers. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we will actually disable this building for now. Disable? Yeah. Once that's disabled, the door should close. Now, um, rockets actually have two exhaust types. Well, a petroleum rocket gives off carbon dioxide. I think, does it give off steam? I can't remember if the petroleum rockets give off steam. Uh, I want to say they don't. Uh, they give off carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide comes out, it's pretty hot, but it's nowhere near as hot as the dry exhaust. So normally what does most of your heating up is the dry exhaust comes out, or the wet exhaust comes out, which is the carbon dioxide, and then it gets caught in the tail end of the dry exhaust, the 3 by 9 tile one, which superheats that gas, and that's what's causing most of your heating in your rocket silos. Well, that and anything that touches the bunker tiles. Um, for hydrogen rockets, hydrogen rockets give off a lot of steam and then the steam gets caught in the rocket exhaust and it gets superheated. So while it feels like hydrogen rockets are hotter, it's not so much that they're hotter, it's just that water holds a lot more heat and it's much harder to deal with a whole bunch of hot steam than it is to deal with a whole bunch of hot carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide doesn't have a lot of thermal capacity or thermal conductivity, which is why petroleum rockets don't feel nearly as nasty to deal with. 
they both give off actually about the same amount of heat. Uh, I used to build a crisscross. I built a crisscross of uh, insulated versus non-insulated tiles beneath the dry heat exhaust just to check. The heat of both the hydrogen and the petroleum is actually about the same. There's no real difference between the two. Now, so the door is closed. Yes. Okay, let's redo the automation on this because it is a horrible mess. Uh, I hmm, Actually, where's my other rocket at the moment? My other rocket is 68% complete. That means we have a few cycles. You know what? Let's redo both of them and do them nice and cleanly this time. Uh, automation wire made of iron. So I'm going to place it there. Now, you'll notice I'm placing it right here. I have no fear of that getting heated up because it's not actually in the way of the dry exhaust. Everything down here will be fine. The only thing that can hit it is the gas coming off this rocket. And that's why I have this lip here. It just, uh, it usually keeps the gas away. It usually dissipates in the vacuum of space before it'll get near our scanner. Now, uh, what I'm going to do just as a standard is I'm going to start running the automation wires from these like this. Right, and I'm going to run one automation wire up straight up like this. And we're going to hop over this with a bridge and then we're going to continue straight on. This is going to be the main automation wire. Now we get that up to there and yeah, this is a whole big mess of thing. What I did instead of, uh, this was used to be the one for opening the door. We're going to deconstruct that. We don't want it anymore. Uh, automation, yeah, we're going to deconstruct that wire too. Uh, we're going to also ro change the roofing on this cable as well. You can come down here, go left, and then we'll hop over that and continue on. I just would like to clear these things up now because, well, that mess over there just annoys me. That looks absolutely horrendous. A little bit of clean automation, and uh, hopefully on my next hit, I'll remember to do it the same way. Hopefully. Now, deconstruct that. And I've also moved the... Uh, these hydro sensors are here, the ones that are hooked up to the doors. They're just there so that we can manually open the doors when we want to launch. So I've moved them up to the top so they're out of the way, and then I can just plan ahead and I don't have to worry about things being getting them getting in the way of the rest of my automation. Now, uh, down here, deconstruct this stuff. And yes, I know this is still all very temporary, but uh, it is just useful to get all these things standardized. Uh, there'll be less trouble later on when I try and modify things. Oh, yeah, so that goes down here. Hops across, and now we have a nice clean run all the way up to the ro for to the doors. And if we come down here, same thing again. Have that hop across. Done. And that's our new detector. Ooh, I'll have to power it, of course. I forgot. To, ooh, yeah, no, I can get rid of all of this all the way up to the top. Much cleaner. Just as long as I remember to hook up the power and tell it which rocket it's supposed to be looking for. Uh, you're looking for research one. Okay, that should be good. And then I just repeat the process on the other side. Now, how is our research looking? Did I burn through all the modules? No, I still have. There must have been some still in the actual building. Uh, I probably should have researched cargo modules first and left hydrogen until later. Okay, future note. If you do the research uh, tree you want to take, solid fuel, hydrocarbon, then solid cargo, then cryofuel. Yeah, I have a tendency to make far too many mistakes. In, in my defense, it's been a few months since I've actually uh, done space. So I've forgotten some of the little quirks. Now, uh, we'll put this actually up. Ooh, actually, I'll leave this down here for now. Uh, get in an automation wire. And actually delete all of these ones. We don't need them anymore. Yeah, so, same again. I'm just going to do some uh, little bit of standards. Uh, you know what? I'll rip it all out. Build it up from scratch. That whole mess is just painful to look at. All gone. Yeah, I'm also preparing a second... What's going on over here? Oh, yes, I'm preparing a second petroleum rocket so we can do multiple cargo missions and just hammer this out quickly. Um, now, once the second rocket come back, comes back, I can definitely actually get out the cargo, which would be nice. Oop. Actually, you know what? You can stay there. You're already set to the correct. I don't want to actually accidentally dump in more oxalate than I need just yet. Now, automation. Done. And how's the rest going on? Eh, they'll get around to it eventually. Oh, yeah, that was one thing uh, that was brought up multiple times in the comments was, where is it? Mesh tiles. Uh, you'll notice here, people were worried that uh, 
the hydrogen was going to escape into space through the mesh tiles. Now, there's a whole complicated patch notes thing behind this, but uh, let me try and cover it briefly, hopefully. Uh, it used to be you couldn't use uh, metal doors in space. If you tried to use one of these or is it mechanized airlocks, the moment the mechanized airlock opened up, uh, basically there was no backing on it, so all your gases and anything in the room tried to vent into space. This meant you couldn't use them in space, which was really annoying. So then they invented drywall. Uh, this drywall here. So people were able to put drywall behind the doors, and that meant that the doors, when they opened, wouldn't vent into space. At the same time, they allowed you to put drywall behind your uh, mesh tiles so that your mesh tiles wouldn't vent into space. But people being people, they found that if they dumped a bunch of drywall in with a behind the mechanized airlock, they could increase its thermal capacity and use it as a better heat injector, or just it allowed them to do funky designs. So the dev team stepped in and removed the uh, the ability to place drywall behind doors, but simultaneously meant uh, changed it so that doors could uh, didn't had a backing automatically and when you open them in a vacuum they wouldn't escape let any gas escape unfortunately by removing the drywall ability behind doors they also removed it behind mesh this meant mesh tiles couldn't be used in space without letting gas escape so they changed mesh tiles and airflow tiles so now they don't let gas escape through them i'm not sure about liquid i believe liquid is the same thing you can have liquid in a mesh tile and it won't escape into the vacuum of space um but you'll notice here oh um hmm yeah, no one saw that. I totally did not leave that battery box not hooked up for about 40 cycles. Uh, okay, that was a, a waste of battery power. How are they going? Yeah, they'll charge slowly. That's actually just runoff petroleum and natural gas that's that's causing that charge. Once the uh, the solar panels come on, they'll be completely charged very quickly. Uh, oopsie. But yeah, mesh tiles in space, perfectly usable. Don't need backing. Really handy little things. Now... Just finish this off really quick. Yeah, I just realized I'm going to be demolishing this whole section anyway. Uh, we can deconstruct that hydro sensor and deconstruct that gantry. Those gantries are expensive. They're, uh, what is it? 200 kilos of steel to make them. Hmm. Thankfully, I've got about 43 tons of the stuff left. Anyway, um, okay, that covers the automation of that. Oh, yes, that's also very important. Where is our rocket? 82%. We still have time. Okay, uh, Damn it, who was it mentioned? Ah, okay. In the comments it was mentioned, I made the automation wire in here out of uh, iron. So I've went back and, well, I'm going to have to go back and remove that. Problem is the rocket exhaust will eventually heat that up and it will heat it up high enough to high enough temperatures to cause it to melt. So, yeah, that's one of those problems that you won't notice until they start your rocket starts smashing into bunker doors. Awkward. Uh, as well as that, that's also why I made the power cables. If you check the power cables up here, they're all made out of steel as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so all the power cables up here, I made them out of steel because your power cables can melt as well if you don't make them out of steel up here. This is why steel is so important for the space biome. And the more you have, the better. Yeah, so we'll just replace the automation and wires here with steel. And that should mean we don't have any more problems. Did I make these of steel? Yes, I made that automation wire out of there out of steel. Perfect. Yeah, let's grab some steel automation wire for this. Okay, that should mean we don't have to do any maintenance on that. At least for a while, anyway. Okay, um, I think I'll just skip forward a bit in time here. There's nothing really else major going on. I've been uh, doing a bit of cleaning up down here so I can gain access to the, uh, the bottom of the power brick on both sides. Oh, actually, I'm going to have to get in there as well. I'm just going to crack this open and release it into space. I want to uh, get in here so I can access the power brick from the top as well. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I'm just going to jump forward until we've actually got some research complete, or... Oh wait, no. Solid cargo wagons are finished. At last! Oh, yeah. In that case, we're going to want to jam on the rest of this. Uh, next up, we want liquid fuel tank. Followed by second liquid fuel tank. Uh, followed by two cargo modules. Actually, before that completes, we will stick on a command capsule. Uh, quick gantry. I'll have to change the automation slightly here. We're going to be putting in a hydro sensor right there. So, uh, automation. Uh, deconstruct. Oop, automation deconstruct. And then we'll stick in a hydro sensor there and hook it up to the to the actual gantry. This stuff is pretty straightforward, but it's a lot cleaner now that I've actually made all those changes. Uh, automation. There we go. 
Now, uh, what are we looking for? Oh, yes, cargo modules. Where is that fuel tank? I thought I queued up a fuel tank there. Oh, ladder segment. Uh, so, uh, liquid oxidizer, liquid fuel tank, liquid fuel tank, uh, cargo wagon. Okay, that means we can also continue on with this one. Oh, now I've got to deconstruct these. Yeah, so I just thought I'd cover how to do your first cargo mission. Then I'll, I'll skip forward until we've got the relevant cargo. I've come up with a new design for the liquid oxygen and hydrogen. I had to change the old one because the steam turbine had changed quite a bit. You need at least steam, two steam turbines now, or yeah, about two steam turbines to delete all the heat that's going to be generated. Well, at least if you're running it flat out for a liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen uh, construction. And they are, if you haven't built yourself a petroleum boiler yet, it's probably the most complicated thing you're going to build. They are pretty, hmm, there's a lot of automation going on. Not not very complicated automation, it's a little basic stuff, but uh, there's also lots of things you need to know. Like, uh, how many tiles does it of oxygen, or how many kilos of oxygen, liquid oxygen, does it take to form a tile? 500 kilos. Not knowing that can cause you problems with your build if you don't know what to start. And there's no way of finding that out until you actually you know, start liquefying oxygen. And by then you've already made your build, so it's a little bit too late to be modifying things, if you know what I mean. Uh, okay, we'll extend that out. All right, get that solid oxidizer up and running. And, oh yeah, start research on cryofuel. It's next up. So once this, uh, this rocket here is just going to keep continuing doing the research, my next one will start actually, um, the rest of the rockets are all going to be just cargo, cargo, and more cargo. And hopefully, I'm probably going to stop once I've got two of these cargo haulers up and running. Once I've done one, two missions with each, I should have enough raw resources or enough uh, space metals to switch over to hydrogen and oxygen. And that's where you want to get to. These ones should all be just classified as temporary. Make them convenient, but just be aware they are temporary. Oh, that's something I should have done as well. I'm going to have to run up a second petroleum feed. Ah. I probably should have put the uh, plumbing in for that as well. You know what? I'll wait. I'll do the plum that plumbing for that off screen. The uh, I'm going to have to run this pipe straight through here and out the other side. Go. Oh. Actually, you know what? Let's just uh, do a little bit of reverse flow. It'll be fine. All right. Now, uh, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, I'll have the petroleum come through here and pump it back up into the tank. I'll have to do a little bit of changes later on once I get the petroleum flowing from uh, this way as well. But nah, who cares? That's a while away yet. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's cancel all of that. We'll just leave it that way. Oh, actually, no, I won't get the cabling, through, the pumping through there. Okay, that was silly. Never mind. And we'll plug you in there. Uh, so that should allow us to get up at least two of these rockets. Uh, you can go. And why have they not built that yet? Invalid building location? How is that invalid? right on top of another module. Okay, I don't know what changed. Game is sometimes a little bit quirky. Right. And now we need second oh, liquid fuel tank. Second liquid fuel tank and then two cargo. Yeah, I got to build this one up from the base. I should have started this earlier. Right, once this is ready to go, we'll launch it and be done with it. Um, I'm probably going to want to change this fuel tank now right, so we've got 900 in this tank we need another 806 so we'll make this 806 kilos and the petroleum is slowly slow actually why is that slow slow oh come on why are you catching there that's perfect there should be no slowdown there's plenty of petroleum in the system it's coming off a green oh maybe i'm building pipe somewhere and that's what's causing all of this confusion yeah, they start making weird... Make it fast? No, that doesn't help at all. Make it slow? Yeah, never mind. Oh, yeah, research ship is coming back. Perfect. Right, once that's finished, we just have to assign an astronaut. We'll make it Astro 2. I will make that actually a level 6, just so he ignores everything else. Actually, make it a level 7. We're going to make space a very high priority. Are uh, you fueled up? Yes, you are, sir. Okay, retract the gantry. Uh, are you fueled up? Not quite, but you're getting there. Uh, you? Yeah, we're fully gassed and ready to go there. Oh, accidentally fueled up that one as well. Whoops. Uh, another liquid fuel tank. Two more cargo modules. This is a, going to be an exact duplicate of this one. 
Is there an astronaut on board? Welcome aboard, sir. Uh, destination not selected. Okay, well, move the gantry. Let's the doors ready for our very first cargo mission. Well, not quite. We will be there in two, one. Good. All right. So I'm going to launch it through this menu. I'm not going to go through Star Map. I'm going to shoot, do it through this because that automatically selects the rocket for me. Much safer. Now, uh, we want niobium and fullerene. Uh, the steel percentage here is 31, as in 31% of the cargo wagon will be full of steel, 38% will be copper, 26% will be glass. So one thing I'm tempted by actually is this one. It has less niobium, but it does have a little bit more steel. I think at the start I'll go mostly to these, this one because uh, I do need a fair chunk of uh, niobium to start. So we'll go for that first. So that can go. Uh, get out of here. Uh, launch path blocked. Oh, yeah, I haven't actually let the doors open fully. Had I, that was sloppy. And are we good? Yeah, we're golden. Let's send you off on your mission. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> Bring me back some delicious cargo. Yeah, now, fuel tank. Oh, I have not changed this one. I say it was 806. Oh, perfect timing. Oh, the rocket has landed. And, oh, close the doors. Close the doors, Francis. Don't forget that. I yeah, will close the doors there. Uh, so once they're closed, rocket will be gone. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Now, uh, second, that rocket has come back, meaning let's make sure our research is queued up. Yes, it is. Perfect, perfect. And I will just finish off this second rocket. Now, that's pretty much it. I think I'll fast forward until the rocket comes back. There's, there's no need for you to watch me build this second rocket. It's identical. I'm going to have to run the automation and the power. And, oh, actually, I'm going to need access to in here as well. I want to gain access to this power, this plug socket. Oh, yeah, if you've never used a plug socket before, it's just so handy. Uh, one of the things I do is I don't like to leave anything around the map that's going to generate heat that I'm not managing in some way. So all of my transformers are... Well, basically tied up with some sort of heat deletion device. Um, so there's no transformers. Just you, You'll notice I won't just dump down a transformer on the edge here or something like that and just leave it there. Because if I do, I it won't cause any trouble for at least a hundred, couple hundred cycles. But eventually that heat is going to probably gum something up. Uh, you can't leave transformers just sitting around in space either. If you do that, they're definitely going to overheat. So every single transformer, everything, they're all tied up with a heat deletion uh, device. So... Everything in here is tied up at heat deletion. These batteries are tied up at heat deletion. Basically, anything that uses generates heat is usually tied up in some sort of device that deletes the heat for it. Everything in here all has its own cooling solution. All of these have their own cooling solution. Uh, even the batteries on this over here, they're like right beside these, these window tiles, so they've got their own cooling solution as well. That's... Mm. You could get away with leaving uh, some devices just sitting out in the open. Like you could probably put a transformer here and it wouldn't cause problems probably for hundreds, if not thousands of cycles. I just don't want to. As well as that, having all of these pre-made means when I need power, I look, there's a free power plug, connect it up to something and I'm good to go. It's just that simple. It, it just means, okay, it takes me whatever, a couple of cycles to put one of these together. But once it's done, I then have an easy power source to draw off and I don't have to worry about well, where am I going to put it or anything like that? It's just a little bit of fore planning that makes your life easier. Now, one thing I found that was very funny, there was a post on, uh, I can't remember if it was the, the Clay Forums or Reddit, but they're asking how much uh, stuff could you put in one spot and how, what kind of tile could you do it on? Well, the answer is, it doesn't matter what kind of tile you put it on. It seems you can dump an enormous amount of materials on one spot. That's about 4,622 tons of pressure on top of that gold weight plate. Who knew gold had such capacity? Uh, I also sunk them down in the floor one tile just to help uh, decrease the area of effect of their negative decor because it's pretty enormous. Minus 1800, minus, minus 1900 there. Ugh. Just uh, I don't want my dupes anywhere near that for as long as possible. Now they just hop over it and keep running, hopefully. Um, all right, so I'm just going to skip this forward and uh, we'll come back to it when our cargo mission has landed and you can see how we deal with cargo, at least in this early stages of the game. See you in a wee bit. Ooh, I just uh, made a bit of a mistake that you'll make a few times. It's not the end of the world, but uh, just it's nice to know how to fix it. This here is uh, my new research config. I had to rip out a, a research module, put in another fuel tank, and then I just had to deconstruct the research, the command caps at the top, and stretch the whole rocket. You know, just a, a quick reconfiguration. However, I accidentally configured uh, this for to be a cargo 
the amount of fuel I put in was for running the actual cargo mission. I didn't actually do, break out the calculator. But the calculator tells me I need, what was it, uh, 1,098 kilos of oxalite and fuel. So that's 900 here, and then I'm going to need either 198 here. But I didn't. I put in way too much. So you have to leave a gantry up here, and then a duplicate will come along and actually remove the fuel. If you don't, if they don't have access to the fuel tank, they can't remove the fuel. So put in a temporary gantry or something like that, and that will allow you to rip the fuel out of it. Of course, when this takes off, that fuel is going to vaporize and turn into sour gas due to the heat exhaust. But who cares? Oh, actually, wait. A duplicate's going to yeah, some duplicate's going to carry that down to the bottom of the map. Good for them. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, it's just one of those things that will happen to you at some point when you're dealing with uh, petroleum and all that. Oh, is there... Oh, no astronaut on board. Whoops, took that back too early. But I'm ready to launch this. Uh, I've reconfigured the research rocket. It is now ready to travel to you then further distant planets. Uh, namely, let's check the star map here. This should be able to make it all the way out to, yeah, the 4K planets. All the 3K ones, all done. Uh, there's nothing good out in any of these. Uh, these ones you can get stone hatches on, but yeah, we're, we're long past stone hatches. So yeah, we can go to all of these little suckers out here. There's The ice planet is the only one we care about the most because that one has wart seeds. They'll always be good. I'll be running a few missions out there just to get my hands on some wart seeds, but there's no rush. All our heat needs are taken care of, but, well, they're wart seeds. Please, warts. There, there, there's no reason not to get as many as you can. Anyway, I'll skip forward a bit more until... Actually, is this ready to launch? Oh, you are going to be Cargo 3. Yes. Uh, I have way too many ships now. Okay, so one, two... No, oh, Cargo 2. Sorry, you're renamed to Cargo 2 already. And you have an astronaut. No astronaut assigned. Uh, yeah, number three is assigned. Yeah, so we've got one in research, one, two in cargo, and three is in Cargo 2. That's not going to get confusing at all. Uh, oh yeah, but once we have an astronaut on board there, we'll put it up to level 7. Once they're on board, we can send them out and actually send them off for another yeah, we're basically going straight back to the satellite as well. And once that's done, we can have... Ooh. Are you in? Excellent. Oh, why is that door open already? That door should not be open already. Who's setting that signal? Oh! You're detecting meteor showers. That's, uh... Yeah, you know, that's that's not too good. Uh, let's launch you now. Yeah, that's a good idea. Show stir map, you're selected, launch. Off you go, buddy. Godspeed. Yeah, so that'll bring me back. That's two cargo runs. I only need two more of these. So basically, once this one returns and this one returns, I'll send them again, and we'll have all the cargo we need to make liquid oxygen and hydrogen. Then we'll redo the whole rocketry system again, and we'll redo it with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. At that point, we can actually start automating it completely, like making it 100% sustainable, no interference required from us. We'll even have to put in some shipping rails. But uh, yeah, I'll just skip forward until the uh, cargo returns this time. Okay, another problem I've run into here. This command capsule seem to have bugged out. Uh, Astro 1 won't go in. And as well as that, if I check on the space scanner here, you'll see cargo 1 and 2. That's these two rockets. So research 1 is not actually showing up. You can see it in here. Uh, research 1, it shows up in here. But uh, it doesn't actually show up uh, on any of those things. So I pretty much have no choice but to deconstruct it. That's that's your best bet when this thing kind of thing happens. Just deconstruct the module and reconstruct it. That should sort out your issues. It just... Uh, I think it's because these things have to be placed on top of something, and maybe I hadn't got something down here constructed in time and it bugged out. If this fails to do it, just reload it. They are, they're not perfect. You just need to bear with the developers. They're still uh, working out some of the kinks in this game. But yeah, delete, reconstruct, should be good to go. Okay, I actually had to reload the game there. The uh, ships disappeared from here and wouldn't come back, so I actually had to load out and load back in again. Just if you encounter that issue yourself. I'm sure they'll patch it out at some point, but if you do lose these out of your scanners, just reload the game. It's a little bit painful at this stage, but uh, the other option is just letting them smash into your bunker doors. Your call. Okay, and our cargo container is finally back. Thankfully. Yeah, let's just let it land here. Oh, and we got a space rock of some sort. Whatever. We'll, we'll worry about all those later. The main thing we're concerned about here is what we actually brought back. 300 kilos of steel. Actually, one thing to bear in mind, these are both uh, identical. They'll both have the exact same amount of cargo. So steel, yeah, copper, glass, but the fullerene and the niobium is what we're interested in. Now, you, the niobium, we only need about, what, I think it's 
10 kilos. You know, we need a very small amount of niobium and that will allow us to make thermium. And uh, yes, actually, I made one tiny mistake. I never queued up tungsten. Yes, let's go back to our industrial brick here. Uh, tungsten. Yes, what do we have here? Iron to steel. We'll leave you. Uh, iron. No, we don't need any more iron ore. What we do need is wolframite to tungsten. Uh, let's do about 10 tons of this stuff. Uh, also enable the building. Yeah, that would be a good idea. How much wolframite do we have? We have 38.4 tons of wolframite. I've, during my cleanup, well, before the cleanup, I went and stripped out all the coal biomes. I mean, I mined out a lot of them. Any wolframite that was present is mine. So that's all the wolframite I have in existence right there. That means I can make 38 tons of tungsten, which means I can make about 38 tons of thermium. So you don't need that much thermium. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll 10 tons of tungsten. I'll make about five tons of thermium. That should be all I need for the whole game. Anyway, where was I? Ah, yes. Now, the main thing here is the uh, fullerene. The niobium we can get by with one cargo container. That's all it would have taken. But the fullerene, we need one kilo of it for uh, per recipe. Oop. We need one kilo of the fullerene per recipe, and we need about three, preferably four, to be completely safe. Now, this turns out to be quite a good haul. Normally, you get like one and a half kilos. We've got closer to two, which means... Between this and the next cargo wagon, we should actually have enough to implement instantly the, the liquid hydrogen and oxygen build. That's that's just perfect. Um, yeah, no, this has been a really successful planet. Uh, second rocket will come back. It's going to the same planet, so it's going to have the exact same percentages, exact same everything. And to get the cargo out, you have two choices. There's, of course, the shipping rails, which will automatically dump it out onto a shipping rail, but we're not going to automate that just yet. I'm going to wait till we're ready to seal these suckers in. Or you can just hit, uh, where is it? Empty storage. Did the game hang, or is that just me? Oh, wait. End of cycle. Okay, we'll, we'll be back to you shortly. Um, yeah, so we just hit empty storage, and it just dumps it out on the ground. That's a lot of it. And we'll sweep those up. Uh, currently, everything I have is being swept up to, well, to the storage area down here. Now, in the background, while things are going on, I put together one of these molecular forges. Now, this is where we're going to make our super coolant. Uh, it requires gold, petroleum, and fullerene. In fact, oh, yeah, we need petroleum. We have lots of petroleum, but you can't actually pipe it in, if I recall correctly. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no actual pipe inputs in that. The only way to get petroleum into that is with a pitcher pump. <laughs> I know, I know, where is this? Yeah, this is close enough to the old man. Um, we'll pause that so we can scroll faster. So the only way I can get the petroleum in is if I actually make a pool of the stuff and pump it in. So let's uh, yeah, let's deconstruct some of this junk over here. Buildings, yes, all of you can go. So I'll deconstruct all of these and actually have to put in a bottle emptier and we'll have to take it all the way up from the bottom to the top. Um, could put it over here. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's put it right there. And we'll cancel you. Oh, wait, no, come back. We're going to be so useful. Uh, where are we? Pitch bump. Why is that not giving me a... Oh, there we go. I make that a ceramic? Yes, I made that a ceramic. Excellent. Okay, so once that's in, we'll be able to actually start to... Uh, well, <laughs> making fullerene. Uh, for the thermium, I think I need... What do I need for this? Oh... Yeah, it's a few tons. Uh, how much have we got? We got five five kilos of ni niobium will allow us to make us 100 grams of 100 kilos of thermium. So for every five kilos of niobium, we've got that many. You know what? Let's just forever that sucker. Uh, five into yes, about 18. So 1.8 tons. Yeah, that'll be fine. So second mission back should get us enough thermium. Also, as well as that, once I have the thermium, I can grind up the thermium. Well, I can put it through the refinery, and I can instead turn... Uh, actually, I'll wait till that's done so that I can actually show it to you so it makes more sense. But basically, we can grind up the thermium we're making to turn it into niobium. So we can take 100 kilos of thermium and turn it into 100 kilos of niobium. And then we can take that niobium to make more thermium, as long as we have the tungsten to do it. Now, uh, one craft of it, please. Thank you very much. Almost done. Why is Dig Dug operating that machine? Dear Lord, Dig Dug. You should be near that place. 
Uh, I should really hotkey my industrial brick so it's easier to get back to. Excuse the panning. Uh, actually, pause the game to make this faster. Uh, where are we? Ah, here, refineries. So, where are we? Where are we? Thermium to niobium. So, if we give this 100 kilos of thermium, thermium of which we have, we'll get 100 kilos of uh, niobium, which will allow us to do another 20 crafts of thermium, so long as we have the tungsten to do it. I'll probably just use the space, mis space missions to get enough of it. I'm not going to grind up any. That would feel odd. Now, uh, what's going on here? We have 805, 9... Did I turn off the plumbing to that? No, I did not. So why are you not fueling up? You should have started fueling up the moment you hit the ground. Yep, never mind. We'll, uh, we'll at least throw on the ox light for now. Uh, this is going to tell me why you're not filling up. You have 10 kilos. Hmm. Uh, I'll sort that bug out off screen. So I'll probably launch two more missions just to make sure I have plenty of thermium and uh, fullerene. Then this is where we're going to be building our liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen setup. Now, I did a little bit of prep work, but nothing major. All of this is just uh, ceramic tiles. Uh, all of, Actually, you know, all of these bricks are ceramic. Uh, the bottom row doesn't really need to, to be honest, but everything else should be ceramic. And then these tiles here are all just drywall made of mafic rock. doesn't really matter what you make the drywall out of. And then everything in here is diamond temperature shift plates. This is where we're going to be uh, condensing or liquefying. We're going to be liquefying hydrogen in this chamber, and we're going to be liquefying oxygen in this chamber. So we are using a lot of diamond. There's about 29 tons of diamond between these two sections. That's why I've been skimping on the diamond, uh, as in I don't dump lots of diamond into most builds. Or well, I'll put some in, but usually not a lot. And I've got about 26 tons left. So I saved plenty of diamond this round. Uh, before, I actually had to go back and dismantle a few builds and take diamond out of them, so I was able to put together a decent build. But this is where we'll be putting together a liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. It's a pretty compact setup. Uh, what is it? 15 by 12. Yeah, so it's 12 high and 15 wide. We'll be putting in our steam turbines, everything in there. Oh, yeah, but uh, I think I'll cut out the video here. We've got, uh, yeah, we've got everything sorted. Be sure you had to get cargo. Uh, that jammed up whatever i'm going to have to fix but uh barring that should be good to go anyway uh hope you enjoyed and good luck